Actor and producer Brian Hooks has been busy lately working on a Kickstarter campaign for his company, Left of Bang Entertainment. One of the program's goals is to promote filmmaking for at-risk youth and to give children an opportunity to take part in Hollywood films. Today we have our company hype analyst, Rita Brent, on the show, and Brian Hooks is joining us to talk about his program and everything else he has going on in his career. First and foremost, Brian, it's always, always a pleasure to have you. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for having me uh, again. Um, I'm, it's, it's always a pleasure to be here, and I appreciate you, um, you know, sharing my message and mission with your audience. Absolutely, and I want to dive right into it. So I know we have a week left of this Kickstarter campaign. Can you tell us a little bit about it and how exactly will these funds, you know, directly impact the youth involved? Yeah, well, basically, it's a Kickstarter I started for the youth, and with the whole pandemic, I was forced to take... Um, the training that I was doing with these youth online. And it turned out to be a gift because it allowed us to stretch uh, past LA into Chicago, Dallas, uh, uh, New York and Jersey and beyond because all the youth need is uh, you know, a, a phone or a computer and the internet. And so now they're part of this uh, filmmaking class that I do for them for free uh, on Saturdays. And so the Kickstarter is the next step, you know, because I've been putting my, um, you know, my blood, sweat and tears and my heart into this and I can only take it so far by myself. And the Kickstarter allows them to do their first actual project. Wow. So we're trying to raise funds to do just that. So we take it from this virtual world um, onto where they can make a film hands on, in person, from start to finish, pre-production, production and post-production, uh, be a part of the distribution process and ultimately uh, see their name on the screen for all their cool work and the film be uh, distributed through one of the major uh, distributors. And so it would just be a huge victory for them and keep them, you know, uh, uh, working and involved in, um, and off the streets. There's a lot of distraction for our youth these days, negative distraction. And this is something positive. And so I've just reached out to a, the public with this Kickstarter to be able to fund these youths first project and uh, keep them, you know, occupied. And Brian, it's like every time you come on, it's like some gym is going to be dropped, some type of knowledge is going to be given. So it's always a pleasure to have you. So I, I want to get as, as a filmmaker um, and now a mentor, I want to get your insight on the current industry because we're seeing a lot of reboots, a lot of remakes, a lot of star studded movies that aren't doing as well as, you know, they may have projected it to be. So as a filmmaker, you know, one of the movies I think recently that we've talked about a couple times is Coming to America. Um, ha have you seen it first and foremost? And, and what are your thoughts from a filmmaker's point of view? I saw it, my thoughts were, you know, I, I keep it 100. My thoughts were the same thoughts as everybody else who was watching it. You know, it like, like nah, bruh. Like, this, <laughs> that, that, it was, yeah, they had too much ammunition. They had, they had everything they can imagine. They had no limits. And I think ultimately you have to turn out something greater. And I think it goes to show that, you know, the audience is in a different space and entertainment is in a different space to where it, you know, a, a star studded cast is not enough, right? Like, you know, there has to be great filmmakers and great stories behind what you're telling. And then, and, and then more so, now is such an independent time. So the audience doesn't have to have some famous or some, you know, recognizable label on the content that they're viewing. They just want it to be dope or funny or scary or whatever they showed up to see in some way, shape or fun or, or, or some, some way, shape or form. And I think that's a testament. You know, you can go out and just have a Brian Hooks in the movie, which some people may or may not know. Right, but if right. the movie is dope, they're there for it. Let me ask you this, Brian. So w did you have that same feeling back? Because you did a film next month, will actually make 17 years ago. Um, you had some more, D.L. Hughley, Kevin Hart, Monique, yourself, Soul Plane. And... You know, that was a, a star-studded movie that not a lot of people felt like did as well. So did you feel that way back then? And looking back on the film, do you feel the same way about um, Soul Plane the way that you do Coming to America? I think, I think people would say they enjoy Soul Plane more than they did Coming to America. And that's not being biased. Now, Soul Plane got a lot of flack because 
you know, it was like, oh, you know, black people already got to be such and such. And but that movie was funny. And there's a lot of people who felt it was funny. And um, it got a lot of um, negative feedback when it was released. But I still, when you look at the airplanes and the naked guns back then, those were slapstick, over the top comedies. And so what Soul Plane was, was basically an urban airplane or a naked gun. Now, whether the audience was ready for that or not, I feel they were, but I think critics, because you know of our history, and I'm not mad at it, it's such a sensitive subject when we view how we're seen on screen and you know what's the message, and I get that, um, but I don't think it was a result of how good the film was or wasn't. It just was a result of the tone of, you know, a handful of voices who were upset at the images being put forth. But some, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. If you don't like it, you don't have to, um, you know, support or watch it. And, and if you do, you can. But um, Soul Plane was funny. Go back and watch it. It was ridiculous. It was supposed to be ridiculous. And it no, I, I, de I mean, I definitely agree. It's, it's definitely <laughs> it's a funny movie for me. Um, but on the on the back end of things, you know, when we're looking at what what actually came of it, why do you think it didn't do well on the back end? Because I think reports show that it lost one point two million dollars. So, you know, from from your point of view, especially now as a filmmaker who's making his own movies, you know, you've been pretty independent. Why do you think it didn't do so well on the back end? I think um, I think it was the negative press um, that stopped it from from soaring. I think it was the negative uh, press because we had some of our own voices um, that are respected in the film world and, um, and, and just in a community that spoke out against the film. And I think that negated whatever steam the film would have had, you know, rolling out. And also it was, you know, about, you know, a good three or four months before everybody had the movie on DVD in their house. You know what I'm saying? So they, they had already pro projected it onto their big screen wall. So I think it was a number of things, but you know, if you look at the history of films and how much money they've made, and, and you know, to, to, to me, if, if they're saying it, is, it lost 1.4 million, then I, I don't believe that because that's such a small number in the whole scheme of things of these films that we spend, they spend 40, 50, 100 million on and then they tank. Um, and I know how DVD works because, you know, that, that's my yeah. world. So there's absolutely no way that Soul Plane lost money. I, I would challenge that. So, Brian, as an actor, if you're participating in a movie, do you have the authority to say, I don't like the way this storyline is going, let me change it? Do you have that authority? Or is that when you say, just be an independent filmmaker and you can make your own decisions on the, the plot of the movie? Yeah, on the storyline of uh, if, if, if you're signing on to someone's film, then no. You have to make that decision with the overall script before you say, okay, I want to be on board or not. If you're okay with the story, if you're okay with the character, if you're okay with the scenes. You can't get on and then be like, ah, you know what, man, I ain't really feeling this. You feel your ass out of here then. Brian, it's always a pleasure to have you. We love what you're doing with Left of Bang Entertainment. Um, I definitely hope to see it. You have one, le one week left of this campaign, right? We have one week left and, and I just, you know, you know, I just ask everyone to please, you know, go and check out the project. And, and if it speaks to you and resonates with you, please donate whatever amount you can. Um, you can donate as little as $10 and be a part of actual change. And where can, where can people donate? Kickstarter.com and put in left of bank and they can click on the Kickstarter project and donate there. So that's kickstarter.com and uh, go to left of bang and they can donate there and it will be much appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brian Hooks. You heard from us. Now we want to hear from you in the comments below and we want to also see you contribute to this Kickstarter campaign. We have the details below. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Do you know the comedy culture? Play Comedy Hype, the game, out now.